um, we are getting back to Ira, and Ira will explain uh, what we're doing next. And we're flexible. If you have a burning question which were born during the break, you can start with that. If not, how does that feel? The burning questions, no? Can wait? Or, okay. I've never had my wife, she told me, never listen to me for an hour and a half straight. So this has been a blessing. This is a, I'm, I know I'm going to pay for it for the rest of my married life. But uh, does anybody, I'll try and make, I'll try and show some video and deal with something pretty quickly to show you how some of the process works uh, in a way that's more engaging than me talking at you. Um, are there, were there any questions about it? Anything that stood out before I started? Okay, the first thing then, um, jury deliberations. The difference between, and I'll set it up the distinction since it's a Korchak uh, conference, the distinctions between Korchak and our youth court in the spirit and legacy of Korchak is that the, again, to be in it, the student acknowledges responsibility, says I did it. It's been done, I'm here to explain, and, and the advocate who speaks for the student is here to help repair and it, to present it and make everything better and stronger and realistic. And I can't show you the actual questioning. This is from a full simulation. Um, I'll show you the deliberations, the jury questions. And I'll, the reason why I'm going to show you um, some of the, I'll show you two parts of the process. I'll show you two deliberations for two distinct simulations where the video is very good. The actual court questioning. I couldn't show a real one because it's confidential, but the, the, the sound isn't good enough. And I, I would rather show what, this is what you get when kids actually are doing, they took it seriously. They took these simulations seriously, and I wanted to show you two different versions. And these are, this is just my class. This is, um, they ran through a full, they had the trial, um, or the, they had the session. The uh, person explained why they did what they did what was done, they were questioned by the jury, then the jury comes out to a room to deliberate for about five minutes and they mark what's called uh, a constructive disposition. And you can listen to what they focus on and what they think is important. Bear in mind this is several, this is like uh, three years ago and we've really worked to streamline the process. And I wanna, I wanna show you that now. So this is one set and hopefully the cursor. It's on the bottom to the left. On the bottom of the picture, there is a small button. That would be the second set. Yeah. The person on the far end is the jury four person. I gave you a sheet for that. That's the person who presents and guides the questioning in, you know, and orders it. So you do need to establish some order. Try the, break up or what? The, the, sound. the video disappears when oh. and the mouse But there's no hearing. video, there's only the sound, I believe, right? I read. It's video.
Should she do an apology to the um, the bus driver too? Because she was kind of, you know. I, I mean, she did. A, I mean, she did kind of. Um, I mean, she was like disrupt when yeah. she was driving, and she did try. The dr bus driver did try to tell her to calm down, and she did ignore it. So, what do we think for the apology to the bus driver? It's gonna be like written. I, I, don't think, I, I, I don't think she needs to write an essay to her, though. No, no, no. just just sort of quality. Yeah. And how about jury duty? Jury duty. Yeah. I'm gonna say pass. Yeah. I, I, think, I think she's aware of what she did, and she has a reason for why she did it. Yeah. But I don't think like reading and or understanding other people better. In terms of what, yeah. <laughs> Driver actually, the bailiff reads the papers in the in the beginning and wrote the impact on the bus driver. Does anybody see a problem with that? I put that in. This is your test. Wojciech gave you tests. I'm giving you a test as well. What's the problem with that? Yeah, I guess. I mean, that would be that would be you know saying um, it doesn't matter what the bus driver said, but the impact on the bus driver. Um, and I'll give you a clue again. It's connected to what Judas said. If you make this too lawyerly and you bring in impact of problem on the bus driver, whatever, what are you changing this to? The past. What's that? You are, but there's a word for it. Again, you get to go back to your distinctions. You're making it punitive. You are making it punitive because you're kind of begging the question that somebody needs to be punished for what was done. And I put some language in the bus driver saying something needs to be done. You know, it's just made, and it's realistic because people are frustrated and that automatically, so be careful. If you'll have materials, if you want to do a youth court, it will say gather, and that's why I asked Wojciech who gathers the information. Because be careful of all the information you gather and what you do with it. Be, that can help determine the shape of the, the, the kind of court that you establish. You get to determine your court. If, and I talked to somebody about this, and I said, doesn't an, if there's, can, you know, what about an impact statement? He said, put it in. Sometimes you do it, but there's always the risk. And I'm thinking, yeah, the risk is punitive. You kind of seed the cloud with a sense of punishment. And, and if you don't see it, you'll understand. Because then you bring, it's just a different change. But again, the notion of the way these kids are talking with each other is, is remarkable. They're using that vocabulary.
Okay, I'm going to see if the next, because I did jury deliberations B, I did another class. Uh, I've got someone coming down to help. Okay. And in the meantime, I'm going to go over something that, I, that we don't need to use this for. In the meantime, I think, I think it's important as well. Again, I will always come back to Korchak. And, and, and I mean, you should have said you didn't end with Korchak. And I, don't, I think I ended with, um, I showed the community spirit, but then I flashed the kids. And I'd love to hear their statement. But my final slide was this. And I think you probably, sh if you're at this conference, this is something you should take, and it's from King Matt. Um, let's see if I can do the, I should be able to do the whole. Uh, is that a little better? The king suddenly seemed to remember something. This is from King Matt. You know, Matt, we always did the wrong thing by making reforms for adults. Try doing it with the children and maybe you'll succeed. Why do you think maybe it'll succeed if you try doing it with the children? Because if it works with the children, it'll work for everybody. I, I, that's a good ad, we hope. <laughs> Wouldn't it also, in one way I think about the pipeline, is if you start early, you know, as, as, as I tried to uh, say it with my administrators, if you fill the school from elementary on through middle school, you train your pipeline full of problem solvers, people that talk about what happened and they express themselves, and that becomes a, a really useful skill. Uh, again, you can march off a whole litany of skills that are, are going to be valued in your school. Uh, public speaking, critical thinking, uh, Fact versus opinion. I gave there was an activity I'm where. I'm sorry. If sure. you can show them the slide which you need to show, there's a person who might help with the video. Oh, okay. What What is the number of the slide? Do you remember? It says jury deliberations A. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one. In the, in the meantime, this is, I mean, that's, that's completely fine. In the, the materials, I said on the right-hand side of the blue packet, you should have a, uh, it should have a, no, that's the left side, I think. Um, yeah, in the back. Yeah, in the, if you go to the back, I think I put in something that has a scenario. Yes, very good. And then behind it, what do you have behind that? Okay, good. The sample juror questions, this is important. Um, and behind this, I actually give you my script that I have the. the it's a pocket which is yeah. at the very bottom on the right. On side. the back, yes, you're, you're, that's exactly where it is. I put the three there um, because I knew that my video would probably not work. So <laughs> this is a script. You can see the script. If you look at the script, it says at the beginning, bold print indicates that yeah. should be spoken by the student. Judge Bailiff, please escort the respondent and youth advocate into the court. They come in. Youth court's now in session. The judge says, Bailiff, please read the sixth pillar of character. Bailiff says, trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, citizen, citizenship. Judge, Bailiff, please announce the Skycart recipients for this court session. Bailiff says, our Skycard, Sharpsville, Korchuk, youth card recipients are. Judge, we list the name or names. Congratulations and well done to our honorees. Bailiff, please continue. This is read into the record. 
before every proceeding. Judith, on the right side at the very bottom, the pocket on the right side. I'm taking yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And in the back, the, the, the last one is the script. And so Korchak, I make sure that his name is read, it's pronounced, and it's said. And, you know, eventually people, if they don't know, they question. And then you get the sequence of what actually happens in a court and what's done. Now, here's the activity I want us to try. I gave you uh, sample juror questions and a little uh, scenario that says, male student responded, punched a hole in the classroom door. Very realistic. Uh, male student responded, punched a hole in the classroom door. Now let me also tell you from Wojciech, I, I, mean, I, I found, again, listening to his presentation was wonderful. He mentioned three things from Korchak. A two-year-old uh, came along and tore the uh, book, and they were holding a, in, uh, responsible the child who left the book. I had a case this year. There was a case where somebody took a book and messed on somebody's book. That's a real case. Um, Number one, number two, somebody took somebody's stuff and didn't return it. <laughs> uh, we, we had that again this year. First case, um, it, it, it's the same thing when, the, when you had the uh, urination on each other and back and forth, whether or not, whatever. I had the kid with the graphic cartoon um, using an article of, that disseminates uh, uh, urine. So it, it was, uh, again, the... Uh, these are real. They're realistic things that, that show up. It's universal. These kids go through these things, and, and we had these, these, these issues. So a kid punching uh, a hole in a classroom, uh, uh, the punching a hole in the classroom door, is, is, that's going to happen. And if you follow this thing, this is a manual that would go around and be sent about how to run a youth court and how to create it. It's wonderful. The people are great. Um, these materials come out, and yet, when the kids question as a jury, when they question the kid who did something, I'm the kid who punched the hole in the door. Um, um, somebody, you, you would go through these questions, and this is what kids do when they get, this is actually what the kids get in a manual. If you're a seventh or an eighth grader, is it going to be easy to read this? To read it, you will look down. You see the problem? You will tick off what um, Anton Grunfeld, who I'm staying with, my wonderful host, this, 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 uh, for the past few days, uh, called a line item. You will tick off a line item of stuff. Does any child standing before his or her peers want to be part of a line item? They want to be, remember, I want your eyes on me from the, th the feedback we got. I want your tone. I want you to uh, take me seriously. I want you to listen. I, do I want you to run through a list of dry questions? I had somebody say on a, a feedback, they just ran through a list. They ran through a list. I got tired of people running through a list. So here's what it happens. You do the five journalist questions. Who, what, where, when, and why are old Kipling things. Male student punched a hole in a classroom door. Jane, you asked me the question. What's your GPA? 2.7. Melissa, ask me your question. Where are you in this topic? In social studies class. Oh, at least you're looking at me. Siegfried. Who was around when this happened? Teacher in the class. Jonathan. Have you apologized for their actions? No. So what's the last? Uh, Alice. Do you regret uh, punching a little Not really. So. What do you think, we're, if, we're, if our goal is to understand what harm was created, who was harmed, what was done, how to repair it, what, to, uh, what will build a mechanism, how to reinforce the positives in our community, how to respect the court, how to respect the child, how to look at what's possible within that child, what have we actually learned? We're uncomfortable. What else have we learned? Discomfort. What else have we learned from our series of questions that were basically my who, what, where, when, why, Kipling questions, journalist questions? What have I learned really about why the kid punched the door? No. 
does the kid have a sense that he was actually respected and listened to of why he punched the door? So what do you think you're going to come up with with this sort of, uh, with, with, if you have kids reading through a list like this? I mean, sometimes you might come up with something. What do you think? Do you think it's going to, do you think you have a, a, a recipe for a beautiful bunt cake here? They're not coming from the kids, and do you see any engagement in the questioner? I called on you to read. You probably wanted to read it clearly, but did you, were you really interested in what, you, what I was going to say, or was it a dry question? I didn't even know what the question had to do with the problem. So Good. No. Good. <laughs> do, do, do you think you might need to understand the problem first? Say, so when you, and that's the key. When you question, and when you do simulations, your focus, you know, you might be, well, I'm going to be observed by my principal. I'm going to be observed by my superintendent. So I want my drama to look beautiful and all my little ducks to be walking upon the pond. So you're going to, and yet you're not going to be doing the actual job that you want to do. The job is to get the heart of questioning. Because if you're going to give kids an active skill, a skill that they can use and grow and build on, active questioning, active listening, engagement, because if you can't, you can't ask a follow-up. One of the things, and I didn't mention it uh, about in the, um, you know, where did you feel there was a problem? One of the kids wrote, why didn't they ask me a blank and follow-up? They just went through the list. Kids will go, if you give a list, kids will go through a list, right? They will go through the list and they'll be happy about going through the list and they will read the list and they'll, it's his turn to go through. So in, in order to avoid this, this is what I did um, actually, I did it, I think, I, I'm, I think like in September or October because I just got so frustrated with kids. I didn't have time to train kids because the principal, you know, said, let's just do this. And I said, well, normally what I would do is I would train them. And it was just, no, we want to roll this out and do this. So I didn't have a real chance to train kids. They weren't in literature. They weren't versed in core talk. And what I got was, what is your GPA? What is your social? What happened to you? What happened to cause you to be referred to youth court? Kid answers, they don't go, when did this incident take place? Where, who saw it happen? What was, be, uh, what was happening before the incident took place? What was that? Kids read the list. So what I did was in your, um, in your blue manual, it's clipped inside. And there's a reason why I did that. That's the important, this is what I think is the key to the process. This where it says the juror questions. All right? Uh, Everything that I do is based on, on practice and, and repetition and whether or not I think it works or not works. Uh, this works. When a middle school kid looks at this, first of all, they like the pictures. Number two, they actually understand what you're asking them to do because they see it in color. They see it as a child will see it. Well, our district doesn't want to do color because it's, you know what, if you want to do something, if you want crap, that's what you're going to give them, right? If you're not going to invest in it, you know, this is what you invest in. And if not, then don't do it. You know, give them some color. You know, put a date on. Go, you actually have to go through these, and as you teach them each thing, everything that you teach them is an important aspect of, in my subject, language arts, or in civics or social studies, whatever it is, facts. What are facts that are pertinent? As a lawyer, generally the recitation of facts essentially wins the case. The best recitation of facts wins the case, you know, because you're presenting the same thing accurately, but you're presenting it in a way that <laughs> your accuracy is almost persuasive. You need to understand what happened and think and listen what you heard. Because if all you're doing is waiting to deliberate and check off a template, well, give them this, give them that, let them write, let them apologize, you're not going to solve anything. You're just going to pat yourself on the back that you want a court. So you go through all these, and what I did was I took this whole sheet, which was, which was worked. At high school level, it worked. And I, transla I translate it into middle school friendly color pictures that people respond to. And it's not going to solve it, but it's going to enable you to let them think in terms of pictures. Look at, take, if you really want this to work, look at each picture and think what avenues will each of these uh, questions, what happened immediately after. Focus on what happened after. What do you mean by after? and have them mark up, give them each a, a manual. Have them mark up, follow up, follow up. Because if you don't ask a follow up, 
you're leaving something on the table that I can't, as, 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 as the, the observer, I cannot come in and fix. It's frustrating to me where I see somebody waiting or aching to tell you, oh, they, just like you said, somebody was teasing me for two weeks beforehand. If you, I put that in a simulation. There was one who was being teased, a new kid who was being teased by the person who actually lives uh, close to them, so they're on the bus together, and they, I think that's the one that was acted out. So I tried to put in things that are real, and that actually is a real thing. If you don't actually acknowledge that and use that in your questioning, when you come back and do the thing that I can't show you on video and deliberate, you're not going to have an authentic, useful resolution. It won't, be, it's just going to be a template and people will learn just like detention. Say you're sorry, look at a goal, um, meet my teacher. Well, so and so is my little for Sharp House, and okay, I'm done. Where have you rebuilt any sort of mechanism? Where have you rebuilt? Where have you affected? Where have you, you know, who's harmed when the door is punched? Think about that. Each of these questions demands. Like if I were doing this um, and I'm doing this as a course, I'm going to, you know, this is a kind of learning opportunity where we're going to come up with a resolution and it's going to be a crappy resolution. One thing I do is as a, um, I teach, how many of you are, are middle school, are language arts teachers or English teachers? No? Yeah, great. Okay, wonderful. When um, we have to teach, um, uh, we, we teach, uh, Verbals, uh, gerunds, infinitives, uh, participles. We, we put these things that, that, uh, that affect style. And you can dryly show a kid grammatically what they need to do. You can show them stylistically what a gerund is, what a participle is, how it's uh, something that acts as, a, uh, uh, acts as an adjective, but it's really a verb, so it's powerful, you know, an unanticipated event. You know, <laughs> you throw something verby at them. And what I do is I give them uh, like three sentences, one without just a statement, without any sort of adjective or modifier, and ask them to write about the mood or the tone of the story. Next one I give them is, a, is, is the same set, but with participles, with gerunds, with these verbal uh, modifiers. And it's amazing the difference, and I ask them to write setting, I don't know, setting conflict, I forget what it is. You guys could do that kind of stuff. And it's amazing the different stories you get and the people who, they ache to make something of nothing. You know, the one that has nothing, they're making it up and they're looking and they're, they want to please you. So they write this card and it's just nothing. The other ones, it's so easy. They write all this description. And some of them don't even know. Half, half class I give the, 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 the good the, the stuff with writing it. The other half I give nothing. And, and they're just wondering, what the heck did they come up with that? That's so good. And, and you know, and, and then you show, this is why it is. It's the same thing with these questions. You could do as much as you want with it, but there's nothing there. You can dress it up. There is nothing in these answers that will help you come up with a constructive disposition. So, I mean, I can relate this to anything in practice. There's nothing here because I do this. How do you find it? You have to teach the kid to add the modifiers, to add the participle, add the gerund, add the infinitive, add something stylistic to it that will provide something. So in terms of what that means for this, add a follow-up. Who was there? What was going on? What was the feel of the room? That's not hard. Uh, another, another social, uh, another uh, language arts thing. What was the setting like? You know, setting is the atmosphere. So you're giving them another thing. Was it, was it quiet? Was it calm? Was it disruptive? Oh. And the kid can say, if you question, was it, was, was it calm in the, in the hall? Was it, was it, no, um, so it was a little wild. What, what do you mean by wild? I, what does that mean? Well, somebody was, and then already you're getting details. Do you, do you follow me? Kids don't, they observe and they know, but they don't instinctively write and translate. They've seen it, just like Korchak said, the kid observes it and knows it. You have to prompt it from them. And then for each of these, what is your GPA 2.7? Is that all you're going to ask? Is that all you're going to ask about my GPA? You know, that seems pretty offensive. You know, you just say, you know, what's your GPA? I actually have one kid say, what's your GPA? You know, <laughs> to, to another kid who did that. And it's like, you know, it's like, are you okay with that? No. Why not? Well, because I'm not eligible for, does that matter? Yeah, not. And then, and then it changes. And do you want to be? Yeah. Are you A's and B's? Well, really? Is there something? Is there a There's a whole range of things that you can do because part of what you're doing is trying to match 
a solution to give the kid, like the other school district, a relationship with the teacher that he doesn't currently have or strengthen one with a teacher that he or she already has because then you have the advocate and then you find out, you know, does the kid have an adult advocate? So um, who was around when this happened? What does that affect? Who was around when this happened? What will that help? What kind of answer will that get? Can you make that a better answer or a better question? Yeah, who was impacted? Yeah, you know, what do you mean? What, or you could, you, could, you could say, well, who was around? You know, did anybody see you do this? Who saw you? Wow, you, how you punched the whole, did it hurt? No. Did you, <laughs> did you make a mark? No. Did somebody see that? Yeah, you know, Susan saw it. Was she, was she there? Yeah. What'd she do? Well, she jumped back. How'd that make you feel? I mean, that's not, you know, that's not a probing question, but you, you understand if you, those aren't hard to get the kids into a questioning dialogue. And here's another thing. This, this one girl that I quoted, uh, Lauren, loved this kid. Wonderful. She took this on as her, you know, she's older now, but she took, she was so serious as an advocate. And I kept telling them, do not make this. This is an illegal proceeding. But there's a point in, in video when I have the session, it's just the, the recording is very bad, where she did the simulation. And a kid asked a question of the person. And Lauren, who was the speaking for him, the advocate, objected. Never, <laughs> never in the course did I teach objections. She said, objection, your honor. And I have it. And the, the judge said, Excuse me, because we didn't. I didn't sit there and say, "I'm walking around." She, she says, "Objection." She already asked that question. That's not. That doesn't. Could you please rephrase the question? That's all she said. And the girl who asked the question kind of sputtered, and then had to ask a more, uh, uh, I would say, a more compassionate question. Again, if you trust in the kid to do that, that was just pure instinct. An objection. It was wonderful. I mean, and I always talk about that. I always say an objection because it was, there it, it was nothing that she was told to do, and yet she felt there was something wrong. I had a law a professor who uh, who taught evidence, and he said his first, you know, he he said if you just know there's something wrong, you just got to say it, even if you don't know the right grounds. Just throw something out there and make it up. He said, and this guy wrote a handbook on it, and he he his name is John Waltz, and I think he's deceased, but he was a well, we're a very, very uh, 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 important textbook on, on evidence. So he was an expert on this stuff. And, and his, his thing was, his first thing was, his, I think he said, like his first objection was something like, objection. And everybody turns to him and says, on what grounds? And you're supposed to specifically say to show you know where the question is, is not right. He said, he can't say that, and he knows it. <laughs> and everything stopped. And they look at it and they try and figure out, but he got out what was important. It was just a fundamental problem with what happened. He knew it was wrong. He didn't know the technical. This girl knew something was wrong, and she was an advocate for her, for her, her charge. And that, to me, was exactly what you, you want to encourage. And you're not going to encourage it if you read uh, items. The work you put in before you actually do something is going to show up as, as a benefit in what the kids do because uh, you can't shortcut this. I have a mound of stuff, and you know I don't want to apologize for, for, for this state because I know you're not supposed to apologize. Apparently, that's a big deal now. Nobody apologizes for anything. But the, the idea is, you know, there's a lot to it, but I can point out where your value is. Your value is in authenticity. Your value is finding out what really is a problem, what really is an obstacle, and what really gets people to talk and what gets them to close up. That is your massive toolkit. And then you have to focus on these questions. And if you use this manual, it will help you because you can then break down each question. They're not a line item. They're actually a, 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 like an index of somebody's, somebody's problem. Each one of these is an index of somebody's problem that you're listening to, and they've agreed to present themselves uh, in front of you for. So you have that responsibility to then deal with it. So I think that your questioning and your, pre your preliminary work about what are real button-pushing problems, what are obstacles, uh, and 
in a simulation, do you have something good? Is it workable? Is it realistic? That's where you'll be successful. The rest is just a script. The rest is just a script that you read from. And again, if it comes from the heart and it's sincere, they will feed off it and they'll better you. You know, they'll fix your problems. I'll be honest with you, the Korchak stuff is still a big mouthful for them to say. But they, you, you, you saw from the newspaper, they know who he is. They know that this was a guy who fought for children. They, don't, they did not dwell on his death. You know, that's another wonderful thing about these kids in Sharpsville. They did not dwell on the fact that this man walked hand in hand with the children to, to death in a march that is, is, commemora is just something that's out of, uh, out of the darkest version of history. You see this brightest march of light. But they're not, they didn't talk at all about death. They, they talked about, you asked them to say, man, was he funny. That matchbox, they, they still laugh about it, and they thought it was funny. And they think of this guy as an advocate, a person for children who had a court and who gave out cards. I'm betting he would prefer to be remembered as a person who was uh, 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 empowered, uh, their, their, their stakeholding in a community, and gave each other cards, as opposed to uh, uh, supporting them at a moment you know, because it was all about, it, it was about their individual, their stamp, their, their impact, not only of, of the future, but of the present. And this made them people of the present. So uh, it, that, I think, you know, and, and I'm just coming to that as, as we speak, that really, in Sharpsville, they, they just don't think of him marching to death. And anybody who knows, of course, they would say marching to death and marching with the children and, and how... You know, which is, which in itself is, it, 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 it silences you. But these kids know of him as the joy and that power of celebrating their virtue. So I think that is probably the best thing that we have added to something that he did that we don't do exactly the way he did, but we do in his spirit. You know, I, I do, I will say in the cards, I do mention what happened, but that simply is just part of you know, telling a complete story. I think you, you, you have to tell the complete story. So if you have, I think, focusing again, buttoning, what buttons, you, you know, what pushes your buttons, de-escalation, obstacles, and then dealing with uh, a simulation to come up with um, whether or not somebody felt you actually understood them when you, when, you, when you dealt with them and their problem, that's where you'll be successful. And then just, just follow the script and put it together. The other ones, if you have any questions about this, I'm here tomorrow as well. If you look through this and you say, hey, there's one of those handouts I don't get. Why'd you put that in there? What is it? Just ask me, and, and I'll help you. I wanted to give you enough to put together something, or at least to understand the value of what's presented to you. You know, this is giving you this beautiful gift. This, this man and the people that, that follow in his legacy are giving you this beautiful gift to share with children who need it. He, you know, they, they need uh, what he offered. And what he offered was an understanding of what they are, not what they could be, what they are. And together, you, you, one of your slides, I love your presentation, one of, one of your slides where you say it's, there's this, the, it's now and then or whatever. I forget how it was, but that's what it is. It, it's, it's, it is of the future, but it's of the present. It's who they are, what they can become. But they, they and you demand to deal with their now. And if you deal with there now, you're going to make a better uh, a culture in your, in your school. I'm still trying. I'm still, you know, and I think these victories, I think the major victory I have is, is being able to now move it towards a singular course where I can teach his short stories. Tomorrow I'll talk briefly. I'll just add in some of the things that we've done in terms of language arts with his short stories and with his postcards. And I have all sorts of stuff from kids. So it's, it's not technical. It's not, it's not video. But you'll see what these, uh, you know, what you can do with it, and I guarantee it's something that you can incorporate not only in your class, but you can do, you can do anything um, with 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 communication cards. With um, and I even changed the cards to work with the island on Bird Street. So there's a lot to it. Yeah. So let's take five minutes <coughs> if you have questions for the part which we heard today, and Ira will be with us tomorrow as well. Yes, ma'am. What? I'm wondering why you would even give them a script at all. Like, is, is there, partly I, I can understand why some questions might be intrusive or inappropriate in a group. 
why wouldn't it be sort of like kids just sort of ask whatever comes to mind in the moment? Excellent. Um, here would be the answer. Because you really do need to define the problem. You really need to define what happened. And you have to give them structure. Again, we'll, I'll go back to Korchak. You can't just let them exist the way you, you, you give them, give them the, the boundaries and they will be creative within the boundaries. Give them the scope of what needs to be done and they will enlarge it or they will, you know, as he, as he said, in, and I agree with that. You need to determine who was harmed, um, what was the harm, and how you can fix it. So however you want to break it down, make sure those are covered. And you can provide whatever script you want to do. I think that the journalist questions work perfectly uh, because, again, I try and protect what I do from uh, scrutiny from a board saying this is not language arts. You have state standards that you are legally re required to cover, so I cover them. And I'll cover things with them, and they have to critically think how it works that way. So uh, yeah, you have to figure out who, uh, what the harm was, and fix it. So yes, you can ask your own questions, but I, I, I would defer to Korchak on that one. Give them, give them some um, boundaries, and the boundaries are determine it, and then within that, you know, be creative, uh, be, be a lioness, be a lion on the questions. You know, understand you're going to get to the root of the problem. The more vigorous you are, you'll dig out the root cause. And then once you know it, then it's part, I should probably put in an activity of, of when you notice there's a problem, you know, the awareness moment. Because that doesn't naturally come. You know, as an adult and an experienced person, you can say, ooh, 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 ooh. Where's a, ooh, 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 ooh. Where, where's that moment? But again, I would say you need some sort of script, and that's why I made that a very limited template. There's a lot of room for them to write notes or follow-ups. Does that help? Yeah. And then go back to Korchak and say he wanted a script. You know, maybe he would say, give them a script. They need to know what to do. Let them figure out how to get it done, but this is what needs to be done. Would I be, would I be characterizing Korchak correctly in that respect? I would agree with that. Yeah. Because it's within, there's the inventiveness within the script. And a court, again, you have to give it respect. Don't disrespect the punitive aspect of it. Don't disrespect the tribunal. It is a tribunal. Um, uh, I think a big problem that I've noticed, too, is confidentiality. Kids talk about it. And, and that's, that's depressing to me. You know? But I think, again, uh, you have to establish a culture. And the more you establish a culture with it, people maybe, again, Korchak had a thing, you know, a week to two weeks without anything against you, you participate. You have to have a culture where the kids police themselves and realize the importance of it themselves. That's a good question. I mean, that, <laughs> it's a first class question. Jane does have a question. Um, yeah, I, so my understanding of restorative justice uh, is that both sides have to agree to participate. Is that, does that enter into what we're doing? Absolutely. There's, at the beginning of the process, the principal, here's, here's another issue you might have with your principal or putting in a school district. Um, the administration has to surrender jurisdiction of a problem. Nobody wants to surrender jurisdiction. My principal doesn't want to deal with this. She hates it. She, she feels like that's so against the child. It's, she would rather not spend any time in the day focusing on punishing a child. Um, this is why she likes this aspect. There's a, at the beginning, the kid is presented. And I think I even put a handout in with the youth court right at the beginning. You, you sign a diversion, meaning you have two paths. The kid can either be, uh, uh, take traditional punishment that the school offers for the offense, like detention or whatever, or can choose youth court. If the kid chooses youth court, then um, that's been, that. then the, the child knows that they'll be assigned an advocate to work with them. They'll make their statement very quickly. The, the, then they'll have a session. And if uh, the child then doesn't follow on with, and do what's required, then it goes right back to traditional discipline. And they will then be handled as though they didn't go through UCOR. And that's, that's how that works. Good, good. That's a, yeah, you have to agree. You have to agree. And the letter that I sent you, that I put in the, in the materials, was uh, the letter that the, the teacher, the principal put in at the start of last year where she alerted for the uh, handbook that she would determine that parents do not have to sign 
she will determine the cases that are, that are diverted to youth court. So it's her decision or his decision. And believe me, that's a big decision because school officials don't want to surrender discipline um, unless you get one who, who, who really doesn't. We're lucky. Our discipline issues are, are not, you know, discipline issues that some people face in the school to prison pipeline. But, you know, things are always changing. So that, again, that's a great question because that, that it is. You have to agree. That's a technical question. Anything else? It can be technical. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm just curious. Like, what, uh, can you describe like, a typical uh, case in, in this like, youth, youth court? Like, what kind of stuff going through and what's the, what would it turn out to be? Okay. Um, a, typical, a typical thing is a typical thing that you're going to get in middle school where kids either uh, are disrespectful to each other, whether they, they, they um, you know, I had one, I didn't particularly want to do it because a kid poked another kid with a pencil. I'm thinking, I, I don't want that. I don't think that should be youth court. That's a personal injury. You know, that, that's something that, that, you know, but there, there's, just like <laughs> Wojciech said in his, there was, uh, the, there was uh, vulgar pictures uh, or vulgar actions. There was destruction of property. There were kids that were being disrespectful to substitute, you know, swearing. Um, there were all the things that you get a normal, uh, a, a normal uh, kid that would do. And were they all successful? No. Did we have repeat offenders? I would not want a repeat offender. I did. I told, um, unlike uh, Korchak, who was loaded, his was different. His his first, uh, you know, up until hundreds was all forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. But ours is the kid takes responsibility. Um, and I'll tell you an interesting story, too. Um, we had a community activist uh, who was a local, a guy who was, um, who was involved in gangs and who had all sorts of trouble. And he came in and he turned his life around. He was a rapper. And he uh, came in and he introduced himself that he was part of a community group. And we used him at the school. And I said, this is fantastic because he could be, a, 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 you know, a, a, we could assign like the kids spend a couple hours a day with him. Like he would have the kids walk around. Maybe he would have them, you know, rake outside or he would have them do something. He would just talk to them. He was really, really, a, uh, I, I found him to be a genuine guy, authentic guy, um, really caring. He, he interacted with kids and, and, and middle school kids like uh, a cool guy uh, or a cool girl. And <laughs> I made him part of, of the possibility in some dispositions. Here's a problem. He was so authentic and so uh, realistic that there were some things that they found out that the school board found out that he had been involved in currently that he no longer was able to associate with the kids. You know, like nothing, I mean, it was like, like whether it was, um, um, yeah, I don't know, it wasn't horrible, but it was stuff where it was just made it uncomfortable. But, you know, my, my point is, well, okay, you know, what's, what kind of authenticity do you want? Do you want sanitary authenticity or do you want authenticity? If you've got a kid who's got a real problem who can relate with somebody, but apparently, I mean, the issue was, was substantial. You know, it was tough with the police. I don't know. But, but that, to me, is a great opportunity. If you can get somebody like a community group, I put in the materials as well, some research and some packets or information of what you could put in, what are things like community service, whatever. I, I, because I have middle school kids, I can't really do community service too much. I like the fact that they could work with this gentleman. Um, I really focus on school initiatives because then you kind of, um, you bring them within the school community. Sort of like the story, and I'm sure you probably heard it or somebody told you a story where Korchak was put on trial or was for, for putting the girl up in the tree. Did they discuss that with you? And, and, and uh, I'm not going to spoil any thunder, but I'm not going to talk about it. Okay, I won't, I won't talk about it, but the point was his whole goal for doing this was to get the community to understand that his thing wasn't right and to bring the kid back. So regardless of how he acted, the community rose in defense of a child, and, and that was what was, was valuable. So, you, you know, those are things that you have to take stock of. Look, you know, take a real record of things that your school does. I mean, I made a list of our initiatives, and we have more, and, you know, these are kinds of things that you can put in and kind of sprinkle into your kids' minds. You don't want to shape it because then you're doing the job. But you have to give them ideas. And if you give them the ideas, they'll come up with something good. But my, my goal in this part is focus on the questioning and focus on what's authentic. At that point, one of the participants of that big group of 
listeners was this woman. Her name uh, was Julie Scott, and she came up to me and she said, here she is, and she said, you know, Korchuk is my hero. And mm -hmm. that was kind of, you know, I, I came from the country where many people knew about Korchuk. I studied Korchuk, and I was thinking, wow, a, a teacher from Spokane, which is on a good day, four and a half hours drive from to Seattle, you know, just in the middle of nowhere, forgive me, Julie, but, <laughs> but, and I thought, what would she know about Korcha? And then in the process, talking and meeting again and again at different places, in fact, she said, I came specifically from Spokane to listen to this lady about Korcha. I don't think I satisfied her interest much, I think actually that she knew more about courtship than I at the time. Anyways, I want to return you to that particular uh, slide we've seen several times. And I want you to check that box, which is now highlighted. Mm -hmm. Korchik was not just a teacher of young teachers. He was, and he still is, a teacher of all teachers. Because any teacher, as you heard from I was experienced. Any teacher can take something, develop, and have a huge uh, curriculum out of it, right? And Kochik is definitely an inspiration. And I don't think he will ever cease being an inspiration. So back to Julie. Uh, when we started writing, uh, I invited her to the conference last year, and she did a wonderful presentation. She was very nervous. I was really surprised because she's a teacher with over 30 years of experience in the classroom. She was extremely nervous, like literal, like trembling. And she brought her husband, who was a support system, and who was looking at her like, Julie, do it. And, and she did a fabulous job. But what is really interesting, when I asked her to write for the book, she said, no, you know, just writing for the book could be too much. I said, okay, let's do an interview. So we did a long interview. She sent a number of materials, and out of this interview, we put it as is into the book. So what I learned talking with her, I asked her, why Korchak? Why a teacher from Spokane uh, would talk about Korchak all of a sudden, out of all people, a teacher of English, not of history, social studies? And she said uh, she became involved with Holocaust education, and then she visited Poland, she visited Treblinka, she saw uh, the stone, Korczak and uh, the children. By the way, I posted, I, I'm just making a pause to say it. On the Twitter, Lieutenant Governor Janet Austin put our photo talking about the Korczak Institute. You can check on tweets from Lieutenant Governor. And the second of all, uh, when I posted it on my Facebook, all of a sudden I got a response from one teacher in Washington with a photo of uh, the stone, Korchuk and the children mm -hmm. saying, I'm right now in Warsaw and here, and that's where I am. And that's that's a greeting to your group from me, from Watson, right from there, from Treblinka. So uh, she said that she learned about Korchik. She started reading and meeting with people who knew more. And then the particular impulse was this survey of U.S. Uh, college students, which showed that the level of empathy went down 40% in comparison with 1970s and 80s. I, uh, I'm slightly skeptical about how you actually measure the level of empathy, which is always kind of a question for me. But in any case, uh, if it brought her to do what she's been doing since then, um, it's good still. So, um, uh, so I asked her in the interview what were the goals uh, which actually she puts for herself uh, while teaching courtship. 
And I thought it's absolutely fascinating. The first goal is to develop empathy. And I believe, I'm not going to read it all, and, and you see it from the screen, right? Uh, what is re and I'll put it on canvas so you will have a PowerPoint. Uh, so it's not just developing empathy, it's also social awareness and making responsible decisions. She is an incredible teacher. You, you should see her with the students and she has connections with those she was teaching. She's been teaching in the same community all her life, so you can imagine, right? So she knows everyone, and wherever she goes, people meet and greet. So um, in terms of the, this project, uh, the overarching goal, she says, I hope the students will manage to establish these meaningful relationships with trusted adults. So back to what Ira was talking, it's also the goal of knowing, learning, how establish relationships. And that's where courtship was brilliant. And that's where we can learn from here. So now this whole idea found poetry. What she is doing, it's part of the curriculum. The school principal allows this project as part of the curriculum. So she teaches about courtship. She teaches how to write poems. And then every student in the classroom does a poem. She checks these poems and then if they want to, they read them out loud. So I have a number of illustrations of these poems. Don't look for brilliancy in poetry. They are not Pushkin, if you know the name, uh, but uh, they are really brilliant in terms of the uh, impulse and the message. And this is a high poverty school. This is a school with lots of immigrant children. This is a school which is the farthest possible from being accomplished. And all of a sudden, these kids talking about courtship, about empathy, about how to be responsible for their actions, and they beautifully draw and write. I will give you all of those and you can either exchange or, I mean, I will leave all of those. So this is on canvas. This is actually done as a painting on canvas. And um, all of those are like this or like that or anything else. So what we will do now, I will give uh, maybe three of each to you. They are all different. And then you will read them to yourselves and read out loud one or a couple, whatever you find striking, if you do. And then try to explain why, okay? I, I just wanted you to have, um, so let's do this. I'll give this and can do it with yeah, mine, please. Yeah. And uh, here again and behind. And Judith, I can give you a few yeah. here. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. More so to go. We just take one? No, you can take three. Okay. Enjoy your smoke. Take three. Uh, yeah. And there are more. Once more, over here, and who didn't get no. Okay, who has more? <coughs> more than three. So consider this is the 8th grade, they are 
what, 13, 14 years old. They never heard about Holocaust before. They never heard about was a ghetto. They never heard about culture. The only thing she doesn't know, that is how to pronounce the name. But <laughs> as, as we said before, that's sad that that's what's happening in America. Okay, so who wants to start? I want to start. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> let's think about you no know, accidents. He taught them. He taught them that it's best to forgive someone because if they didn't know, now they do. Mm -hmm. Or because they were tucked into something bad Next time they won't listen. So, maybe yeah. that's, that's all. Yeah. Okay, Ron. Um, well, it starts with the most important rule was that of forgiveness. And then also, I always felt best on my children. Okay, okay. Do you want to show paintings? Uh, is there anything which is really beautiful, which you want to show. You can imagine, not everyone is an artist. Yeah, but, and she allows tracing. She tells children, if you can't, she allows tracing. But, uh, don't you think it's fascinating how, how they do it? Who else? Alice, do you want to read something? Oh, yeah. I, I think uh, this poem is really, really beautiful. Is it written by eight year old? Eight -year -old? That's, that's, a, that's amazing. So I'm going to share a few uh, sure. pieces. So this uh, title is His Love. And then there's like beautiful teddy bear here. And then the person wrote, um, he would create a better world with no suffering. He built an imaginary kingdom of blocks defending their rights in a war. And his love brought the comfort during the grief. So that's really, really nice. Mm -hmm. OK. Alisa, do you want to read? Yeah. Um, so in this poem, the part that was really striking to me is um, how they, he, they wrote, he let the children govern themselves. He taught them that sometimes making a mistake is the best way to not make it again. Just, I yeah. got very succinct. Okay. Ira, do you want to read yours? Beloved author, the story of a hero walking down the street, still walking. A beloved author. Books for children and about children, a beloved author. Not justice, but shall try for justice. Not the truth, but wants the truth, a beloved author. Open and dignified, it is best to forgive, bound in chains that hamper the will, a beloved author. Defend the timid, that they may not be bothered by the strong. What would they think if I condemn in some what I defend in others, a beloved author? I never wish anyone ill, and I cannot. I do not know how it is done. A beloved author. Yeah, beautiful, right? Uh, secret, do you want to read? Um, maybe not a little bit long, but I just wanted to kind of uh, <coughs> point out that two out of the three of mine were actually, uh, they really grabbed on to the, to, to uh, I guess, the conditions in the ghetto and how uh, Porsche have made that better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Hello. This is entitled, If You Were His Child. Mm -hmm. If you were his child, you would feel safe standing by him. You would listen to his words. You would read his books. You would play games with him. If you were his child, he would help you with your homework. He would respect your beliefs. He would give you candies. He would let you draw on his bald head. If you were his child, you could mess up and do better next time. You would easily forgive others. He would take in ghetto children needing shelter. He never wished bad things would happen to people. If you were his child, he would never leave you, even if it meant he would have to die. What do you think? I'm just thinking now, um, if a kid writes this, the kid would never become a bad father if this is a boy. This sticks with you, right? You, you listen to this, you learn about this person, you write about him. 
hardly ever you would become a bad person. At least that's how I feel. That's the impact the teacher can make on a student. I actually asked Julie about uh, whether she writes poems or poetry herself. She said she does. So I asked her sharing something with us, and she did. And what she shared, I think, and, and also I, I will give it to you. It's one page. I printed it for everyone. Um, this is quite, quite remarkable. When she was in Treblinka first, in 2005, she had her personal journal, and she kept it. So she shared with me the notes from that journal and the poem she wrote at the time. Don't judge, because she's not a professional poet, of course, but I think the message is unbelievable. So uh, I, I will read it, it's short. Thursday, July 14, 2005. Treblinka was very meaningful for me today. I'm trying to write about my feelings as I go along this time and not keep them all bottled up inside. Treblinka was meaningful to me because it was in Poland in 1998 that I met my personal hero, Janusz Korczak. He perished in Treblinka in August of 1942, and he had many chances to save himself. I always wonder what I would have done had I been in his shoes. Could I have gone to my death like that? Or would I have saved my own skin? I guess I can only hope I would have done the brave and noble thing. As I thought about Janusz Korczak today, I put my thoughts down into a poem. I pro it probably isn't very good, but ex it expresses my true feelings about this great man, this great Polish Jew, who was a hero. And now, uh, here's her poem. It's entitled, Korczak, You Are My Hero. Mm -hmm. Korczak, you are my hero. I only met you seven years ago, yet you are my hero. In a selfish world, with so few selfless souls, your memory is a beacon calling to me, challenging me, and you are my hero. If only I possessed your courage and strength, if only I exemplified your devotion and love, if only. But you will remain my hero always. You will add by example, even to your death. I met you again at Treblinka, and I hope some of you left Treblinka with me. I met you seven years ago, and I returned to Treblinka to warn you again, but also to celebrate the memory of your goodness. You are my hero. Isn't it beautiful? So um, take one for yourselves, please. And. Um, I think this is it. I want you to remember how many ways, different ways, are there in the world of education and instruction to actually teach courtship. And when I say teach courtship, I don't mean directly teach courtship. I mean keeping the spirit, the memory, the, the life of his passion, I think uh, this is the way to make the world of childhood better. And Julie in that small Spokane, or Ira in, uh, forgive me please, in that small town where he lives, uh, doing this and doing it beautifully, this is possible. And I always, uh, because I'm from a medical family, I learned a long time ago, Doctors Without Borders, you know this movement. So I keep talking about Karchakians without borders. <laughs> Unite. Uh, have you ever heard about Little Review? In Scott. <laughs> I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I, I wanted to be first. I wanted to be first. Uh, I'm not objective here because it's absolutely amazing. And I loved that story. And I loved that uh, experiment because it was an experiment. Um, 
Let me start from significant numbers. Three numbers. One, 13, and 50,000. Why? One, because that's only one example. It's only one newspaper like this all over the world. Whenever, uh, wherever, and whatever you want. Only one. Unique. Absolutely unique. One, because there is only one book about it. Only in Polish. Published last year. Uh, and the title is The Great Little Review. Um, the one also, because the whole history of the little review uh, is between two ones. The first one is the first day of the Jewish New Year, five, six, eight, seven. It was 9th October of 1926. And it was the first day of the Jewish New Year. And the last one is the first September of the 1939, and the first day of the Second World War. It was Friday. That's why one. 13, because that story between ones lasted almost 13 years. Almost, because we needed only 13 days to the next first day of the Jewish New Year, 5,700. Could you imagine it? And 50,000, because that was the number of copies of the little review, or rather, our review, because a little review was a supplement to the uh, newspaper, our review. What was the main idea? This uh, this newspaper, the main the main idea. The 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 most important was that uh, readers and, uh, and 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 writers contributors uh, are still changing. Yes, I'm a reader and contributor at the same time. So so children and youth write. Um, editorial board chooses uh, publish comments, awards, and so many things. And they, they did many things, many uh, interventions or something like that. Yes, someone wrote, <laughs> for example, we know an anecdote about um, the Polish name Roman, Roman, but it sounds like Roman uh, uh, from Latin. Um, and Roman uh, wrote the letter that um, my uncle told me that when I, uh, when I have a good uh, notes, uh, he'll buy me a bicycle. And I had, and he didn't buy me a bicycle. So in the next issue of the <laughs> little review, yes, was an article, uncle, please buy the bicycle, because you promised. Yeah? That was a little inter intervention, but there, was, there were also uh, more important interventions. Uh, Next thing, ah, yeah, flowers, because uh, Korczak wrote that in the little review, okay, Korczak was um, editor in chief between 1926 and 1930, and he was an inventor and he was an author of, of that initiative. And he described his role as a florist. Florist? <laughs> Because children's and youth's texts uh, were like flowers, and he was like florists who made from these flowers a uh, bouquet of flowers. That's the metaphor, which I think uh, is a very good expression of the, of the idea of the uh, little review. The second thing, adults' engagement was very limited, just like in the orphan's home. Yeah? Uh, could you imagine that at the beginning of the, uh, of the little review, I mean between 26 and 27, there were only two, uh, uh, two people 
which were involved in this initiative. It was Korczak, and the second, uh, it was rather, he wasn't, wasn't a teenager, but a young man, Jerachmiel Weingarten. And the uh, interesting is that Weingarten was here in Canada because he, uh, he was rescued uh, during the Second World War and he was in Canada, but next he, um, he, he traveled to US. However, their engagement was very limited. And Korczak's idea fix, but it, it became a reality that in that newspaper, they, they want to avoid the fiction and stress the real experiences, informations, opinions, thoughts, and many, many other things, but not poems, not uh, stories, fictional stories, yes, just rather, because there, there were some exceptions. Uh, however, uh, it was rather um, a newspaper about the real life. And uh, also connected, connecting with uh, the only one uh, newspaper wherever and, and whenever. I have a, uh, that's my translation from, from that book, The Great Leader Review, uh, which was written by Polish uh, prof of uh, one of the universities in, 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 in Warsaw. And she's a sociologist. And she's specialist uh, in the area of uh, newspapers, uh, especially pre-war pre newspapers. And she wrote that Little Review is only one so extensive source which shows us the life of children in Poland between the two world wars, if not whenever and wherever, which was seen through the uh, through, uh, eyes of children not psychologists, pedagogues, teachers, and scientists. So probably that's only one source. And we, we are lucky because almost all copies, all issues of the uh, Little Review survived. And we can read it. I'll give you handouts and you'll find there um, two links. One is to, um, to, to Polish Digital Library with uh, 674 copies of the Little Review, and the second to English translations, 30 or, or almost 30, uh, on the website of the, of the what? Janusz Korczak Association of Canada, of course. Uh, so so you, can, uh, you can read it uh, in English or, of course, in Polish. So that's why you, 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 can, spe you can speak and, and, and learn Polish. Uh, but that's the, uh, that's the great and uh, amazing landscape of the reality between 1926 and 39. Next thing, the source of this idea, the source of this uh, experiment, uh, was the newspaper in the orphan's home. But it's not the same. Very often, uh, I, I, I can uh, uh, I can hear from uh, okay uh, experts maybe, and they it's just a mistake yes to to unify yes, to because they 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 are uh, convinced that Little Review was the newspaper in the orphan's home. No, two separate newspapers. Okay, uh, is it clear for you? This is the main idea. Yeah. The second thing, the context. Context was, editor's office was in the Novolipki street. That was almost the heart of the Jewish district in Warsaw. Almost. Uh, and that was, of course, um, editor's uh, office of the our review. Uh, because the review was, as, as, I, as you know, Friday supplement to our review, the largest Polish language newspaper for Jewish people. But also uh, Polish people read this newspaper. Next thing, uh, 50, 40,000 copies, it's not clear. And it was changing, of course. And uh, because of little review, we know that, uh, that uh, the number of these copies was higher 
from time to time or, 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 or maybe often. Next thing, uh, how, uh, how many pages? Between two and six. No less than two, no more than six, uh, average four. Yeah? Next thing, almost no predecessors and no successors. Uh, of course, there were many tiny initiatives and attempts which lasted, I don't know, a few issues a year, uh, not so, not so big, uh, not so big uh, ideas, but uh, in this, you know, at this scale, uh, little review was only one. Uh, what is interesting, and we know it just from little review, there was a Hebrew Hehaver Hayomi daily friend or something like this. Uh, at the beginning of the 20th century in, in Vilnius. And the next thing, in August uh, 1930, Korczak was replaced by Igor Neverly. Um, he used, before the Second World War, Igor Neverly rather used the name Jerzy, like Jerzy, Jerry, Abramov. It's, uh, it's complicated, but he became a rather famous Polish writer after the Second World War, and Igor Neverly wasn't a Jew. Uh, it's complicated who, who, who he was, but, but he wasn't a Jew. Okay, uh, that's the building, and on this building and on the wall, uh, there is, a, you know, as um, what does it in English? Just yeah, plaque uh, with commemoration of of uh, of uh, little review. The funny is that's the headquarter of the Warsaw uh, um, police uh, something. Yes, that's the headquarter of police. Uh, excuse me. The police? Yes, the police. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The great success of the little review. I can tell you many things, but I'd like to tell you only one thing. Uh, in the leader review, there were like mm, statuses of contributors. When you write one letter, you was contributor, of course, yes. But if you write, for example, I don't know, five letters, you are more important than the previous one. And if you write ten letters, you are something like a permanent contributor. Average ten letters per a year, of course, yeah? However, why not in a week, yes? Uh, and now, could you imagine, we have, there's a special chart or graph. We have 1929. It means that a little review has three years. Could you imagine and guess how many permanent contributors had little review in this year, how many, in the other words, how many children wrote to little review ten times per a year or more? Please guess. I love this moment. <laughs> hundred. A hundred. Okay. Thousand. Thousand. Thank you. But I'm still waiting. Excuse me? 2,000. 2,000? I'm still waiting. 50,000. Thank you. But no, it's the number of copies. Uh, <laughs> could you imagine that it, there were 3,200 children? 3,200. It's unbelievable. Yeah? Unbelievable. Here is... Here, here you have 3,200. Um, I'm cheating a little because that's the higher number in the whole history of the little review. Later, there, uh, uh, there were less than 3,200. 3, However, in 1929, it's incredible. So it was a great success. And that success wasn't be possible without a special motivational system. 
Uh, the first uh, feature was that each author, each, it means really each, could see uh, his or her name in that newspaper, Regal regardless what he or she published. We know the anecdote. There is uh, maybe only one uh, contributor and Polish writer who is still alive, Józef Joseph Hahn. Uh, born in 1923, still alive, and he has an anecdote. He published something in a little review, and uh, colleagues saw it, they were very jealous, and told him, okay, Józef, Józef, do the same with us. And he told them, no, it's impossible, you, you, you have to write by yourself and, and send, and, and you can see your names or initials or, or, or anything in, in the little review. And they told him, it's impossible because I, I can't write, it's too, too difficult for me. But I have an idea, Yuzek, you can give me your text, I'll copy it, and I'll send it. And they did it. So they, they copied uh, Yuzef's um, text they sent to Louis Review and really they saw their names in the Louis Review. Of course no one published that text because it was um, Hans text. However it was really uh, important and here you can see that part of that uh, of that newspaper that's the, my, the second uh, the second uh, 20 seconds mail and Can here yes yeah, sure uh, I'm not sure any of you read uh, uh, Polish what is interesting the names of the kids are given the way they prefer to be called not like Jane for example but not just Anastasia but Nastusia which is like a nickname, which is a much more kind way to call a child, or Franya. Am I right or not? Yeah, because yeah, I'm sure. implying sure, the Russian sure. area. So these suffixes show that this is a nickname which is a much more... Uh, there's nothing like this in English, by the way, in this quantity of suffixes which allow people either call a person in a rude way or in a very kind way. Like I can tell you the name Tatiana can be Tanusha, Tanichka, Tanushka, Tatyanka, and I can go on with that, right? So, uh, yeah, th this, is, this is nice. So the kids are given their names the way they want to be called. And you would never find this in a real newspaper, right? You give your name from your metrics, from your passport from your birth certificate, but here the names are given the way they prefer to be named. Yeah. So that's their names. Uh, it's very moving for me always because it's, um, I have an association with, for example, Umschlagplatz monument in Warsaw because there also are many, many names. Yeah? However, uh, next thing, remunerations for permanent contributors. Real money for real children and youth. Uh, commemorative postcards. So, uh, uh, Ira, you'll tell yes tomorrow about uh, postcards. Uh, meetings with readers. Could you imagine that the editorial board, I mean editorial board, there were youth, yes, below the 18. Uh, they were like celebrities for children and the youth from, from Poland. And uh, to, to meet them was to, 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 to meet a god or someone, yeah? So it was really amazing. But of course, meeting with Korczak was something really important. And, it, it, and he was really accessible because he met with them on each Thursday, even after his resignation in 1930. And we know some you know, uh, stories about it, and it was really incredible for children to, to meet with him. However, um, 
uh, only from time to time it was something special, yes? Rather, it was ordinary, yes, or ordinary man with birth like me, and, and, and he, sometimes he, 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 he told them something, he poured them something, it's not, but it wasn't, yeah, the, it wasn't crucial. Next thing, offshore groups of correspondence in the cities, and that was an idea of Igor Navery, so rather after 1930. And here you have a map from the Little Review from 1934, and that's the, you know, visualization in how many cities and in how many countries uh, were contributors of the Little Review. Here is the pre-war Poland, much bigger than now, yeah? Here, so many, many cities. But here you have Palestine, and here is Uruguay, and here is Paris, and here Italy, Switzerland, the Netherlands probably, and Belgium, yeah? So many, many contributors in many countries. Topics. And now I'd like to give you handouts. Could you? Could you give them? Hmm? Maybe. Please, yes, take one and buy it. It's for you. Yes? Yes, of course, of course, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, thank you. Please read especially this, I don't remember uh, which, the second or the, or the third, yes, the last, the last page. Uh, there are many topics. Please just look through them. <laughs> yeah, I expect <laughs> I'd like to show it because uh, the be at the beginning, of course, uh, Kerchak had an expect expectation about the topics. For him, the most important, as you know, uh, were a real children's uh, um, stories from, from their life, opinions, thoughts. That's why, and uh, you, you have it also in your uh, handouts, um, that's an example. The first letter to the Little Review. With mistakes, you can find in your handouts also mistake. It was translated with mistakes. And it's not, uh, you know, it's very conscious. Why? Okay, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe we can read it. This year we lived in Yusefov in the Hausner Villa near the station. One afternoon, it's really funny to, to uh, probably for you to, to listen to me with uh, mistakes in English translation from Polish. <laughs> it's, cr it's really crazy. Uh, station, one afternoon when I left to wait for daddy, an express train came from Otfosk and a small dog got under is because, because, I don't know, uh, the train catched it, its paw, the doggy was screaming in great suffering. One of the people passing by could not lo look at that so killed without, you know, dots and killed the dog. Us boys, we dug a hole and we buried it. Miecio, Mieczysław, their Polish name, Miecio Kleinlerer. Klein -lerer. It's a real story, very sad. But that was uh, 
Not exactly that. Not only about uh, you know so so sad uh, experiences, but that was Kerchak's uh, expectation. However, it um, they realized that it's impossible because children wanted something more, something different. That's why in 1927 they published uh, a, a list of 200 topics proposed topics and some of them you can you can read in your handouts and many from these topics were really you know present in 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 the uh, little review next thing oh, um, in 1931 we know that in the editor's office they had 17 briefcases each briefcase is one category or one topic. And let's look at it. School. It's rather obvious, yeah? Home, street, holidays, and autumn, spring, summer, no winter. Animals and birds, entertainment, young press, Palestine and Hashomers. Hashomers uh, like Jewish scouts. Yeah? Uh, letters of the youth, literature, Literature, because uh, you know that it's non-fictional, um, non-fiction uh, news, uh, newspaper. However, from time to time, especially during the uh, summer holidays, uh, in um, Little Review, were published some texts, some fiction texts. For example, uh, Ira showed us uh, Kaitek the Wizard, uh, and Kaitek the Wizard, the first was. Uh, it was the first time uh, when it was published in parts in the Little Review in 1934, probably. So uh, they they had their own procedures, expectations, uh, and it worked really great. However, not no without mistakes. And last thing, because I, I can you know. Uh, really, I really like this topic and I, I can speak about it. Uh, but last thing, I'd like to show you two, two initiatives which, which were inspired by Little Review. One is rather local, I'm in Polish, the second global. I'm in American, Polish and Italian and I don't know what. What else? However, that's the Mały Przegląd, Little Review 2.0, yeah, like digital or something. And it was an initiative uh, of one of the biggest and greatest uh, Polish NGOs. And the idea was exactly the same. I was involved in the project and we published uh, Mały Przegląd 2.0 with texts of many children from Poland from youth centers, from schools, from immigrants uh, centers. Uh, and, uh, and it was really successful. However, it was only one issue. It was you know, something like rather commemoration, not, not, to, um, not, not something more. But the second thing is the project of American artist Sharon Lockhart. Sharon Lockhart. Sharon Lockhart, you can uh, here is, is her website. She thought about combining Little Review with I, I I have to read it with Youth Center for Social Therapy in Rudzienko. Rudzienko is a tiny place in Poland for girls. That's why you, you can see girls here. Uh, and she wanted to to help them from the one side, yeah, to help to help <coughs> these girls. Uh, it was something like artistic intervention or something like this. But on the other hand, of course, she wanted to have uh, uh, she, she she wanted to, to to make an art object. That's why she uh, made photographs. And she exhibited in during the uh, Biennale in Venice 
in 2017. So you can find more information uh, at, uh, on, their, on, on her website. Okay, uh, I really, uh, I think that it could be really interesting for you reading translations or Polish versions if you, if you, if you can. Uh, because for me, that's an example that we really um, need to discover many, many new things in the Korczakian area. We know, of course, and we knew about Mały Przegląd, but the first book was published uh, previous year, yes? So it's very significant for me. And that's also, I'm very glad that I can tell you about it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Just, uh, you didn't mention the ages of the children. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was difficult also for Korczak <laughs> because uh, it was possible to, to publish something in uh, a little review, even if you had, for example, three, if you, if you was three years old. Because you can ask someone for write for you, and we know uh, cases like this. For example, I I have no idea how to translate it into English. I'm not prepared, uh, but it was just like this uh, Kleiner's the first letter to 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 my web segment. It was like copy of that letter, and that was letter only uh, consisted of a few words. Uh, the thought of Bolus is, I don't know how to put it, is, is moving. Something like this. Yes. Only that. Only, only that yeah? uh, and that was the letter of three years old boy. Why? It's stupid, yeah? but it wasn't because Korczak told and replied that, and that's something like a rule. Uh, which was also in, in the orphan's home. That what is important, it's my decision what is important for me, not yours, mine. So if for Bolus it was important, uh, it really deserves to publish it. And beyond it, uh, it's important not only for Bolus, but for many three years old boys and girls in Poland. So from 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 uh, children like this to uh, through I don't know ten years, fourteen years, and teenagers to adults, because many adults, for example, teachers, replied or responded uh, to to letters from, for example, their um, their pupils. So, uh, but uh, between. 26 and 30, it was rather a newspaper for children. Between 30, I mean after the, the replacement, between 30 and 36, it was rather a newspaper for youth because of uh, Neverly's ideas. But after the Korczak's intervention, intervention in uh, 1936, it again, uh, it was rather a newspaper uh, for for children between 36 and 39, so it was quite complicated. Yeah. Yes. How how do they how did they work or something? Uh, you mean who or how or? Uh, who were the kids? Uh huh. We, we know little about it, the reasons of, of uh, why uh, there were these kids or, or not other, but uh, probably it was something like, I don't know, um, like in a job, yes? Someone could uh, 
Tell Karchak, I'd like to be a part of your editorial board. Yes, please. Let's come in, in and, and, and try. And after it, if he or she um, uh, was really good, he or, or she could, could, could stay. Something like this, but we, we didn't know uh, that, that better. Yes, it was published in Polish. However, um, it was, or this experience encouraged also the, uh, as I remember, Yiddish uh, writers to, to, to start their own newspaper like this. I don't remember the, the name of this newspaper, but, but, uh, but there was an uh, attempt. And the second thing, that um, well, that it was published in Polish, but uh, letters could be in Hebrew, in 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 uh, Yiddish, and uh, they were translated into Polish. Yeah. Uh, it was a supplement, so uh, uh, we can say that uh, it wasn't financed, but it financed rather our uh, review because uh, uh, in Fridays uh, more copies, more money. Yes, something like this. That was the, the relation. Uh, but generally, of course, it was a part of the, our review news, newspaper. Yeah.